I think the final battle in the second film for the Deathly Hallows is really going to be our greatest triumph in terms of the work that we've achieved. In the past, we've worked with a lot of miniatures, but we've built the whole of Hogwarts in the computer this time, so we're not using any miniature work at all. We've got this digital version of Hogwarts, which allows me to go anywhere within the school. Come on! And anywhere outside it, and gives me tremendous freedom to move the camera in and around the place and when it's being destroyed. That was quite useful. But it's a phenomenal amount of work, therefore, that we have to create, as the school itself is under attack. Protego Maxima Fianto Duri Repello Inimical. So part of the story for the defence of Hogwarts was that the teachers at the school would produce what is essentially the mother of all shields that would protect the whole of the school. We spent a lot of time designing the look of this. It was important that it felt organic, but also we didn't want to end up with something that was visible once the shield itself had finished. And that was a design process that we went through to establish what this shield looked like. The idea was that as the Death Eaters would launch their spells, you would then be aware of its presence again once the spells started exploding on the shield. And there was a whole progression of the deterioration of the shield you saw the weakening of the shield. So you began to get this idea that fine cracks were appearing in the surface. We were keen to make it look like it was actually burning, with the actual shield itself changing its state from being sort of solid and glassy into something more materialistic. And as the shield itself is collapsing, pieces of the burning shield are falling down to the school. And I thought that was beautifully filmed and worked very well.